we are always looking for new emerging agents um, to better treat and more effectively treat our patients with pancreatic cancer. Um, one of the programs that we at Memorial um, have been focused on for a long time is the targeting of uh, BRCA mutant-driven pancreatic cancer. So as um, the doctors will know, um, BRCA is mutations cause a lot of different cancers, particularly breast and ovarian cancer, but they also predispose patients to development of pancreatic cancer. So PARP inhibitors have been studied as a way of targeting a weakness within these kinds of tumors. We have an ongoing clinical trial using one PARP inhibitor called Viliparib in combination with cytotoxic chemotherapy, gemcitabine and cisplatin. And our preliminary results are very encouraging. So for patients with BRCA-driven tumors, the response rates and overall survival numbers are quite good. Um, we also have a second-line study, so looking at a, a separate PARP inhibitor called Olaparib, for, as used as a monotherapy in patients who, again, have BRCA-driven uh, tumors um, and who, uh, whose tumors remain sensitive to platinum agents. So this would be a way of putting them on a lower intensity, less toxic regimen of just a PARP inhibitor without chemotherapy to try to maintain control over the cancer and help patients live longer. Beyond that, because not very many patients nationwide have BRCA-driven pancreas cancer, we're interested in studying whether PARP inhibitors can also be used for treating tumors with mutations in related genes, genes that are also participate in the BRCA pathway or other related pathways. Um, that remains exploratory. We don't really have any sense as to whether that is going to be effective, so stay tuned and, and we'll see how that goes. For us, who are clinical researchers, who have an expertise in pancreatic adenocarcinoma and who conduct clinical tri trials and design clinical trials in pancreatic adenocarcinoma, we are referred to as you know, the uh, romantic or eternal optimistic. Uh, why, in fact, there is, there is a reality. Majority, if not the big majority, of molecules that made it to a clinical trial in pancreatic adenocarcinoma in first line, second line, or third line have uh, failed uh, uh, to prove superiority. In fact, many studies who even succeeded in second line have failed in third line. And I can go on in the list of about maybe seven, eight molecules that were exciting in the phase two and didn't make it to the phase three. Did it didn't stop us, didn't stop scientists, uh, industry and government agencies to, to give up. And now the most exciting is the uh, pegylated hyaluronidase, referred to by PEG-PH20. Recently, we've published the phase two data and with a subgroup analysis. And as we speak, we, there is the phase three clinical trial ongoing enriched by a population. Those patients with whose tumor uh, is uh, hyaluron level elevated or HA about 50%. The idea is to provide the speculated IV formulation of the natural enzymes hyaluronidase. It's going to really dismantle the microenvironment that makes that cancer sh being sheltered from immune system and from the vasculature and allow better probably delivery not only of the cytotoxic but as well of the, uh, the, uh, the immune cells to the cancer environment. As we speak, this is proven in preclinical. It's been very encouraging in phase two, and the phase three study is ongoing as we speak. Only time will tell if this is gonna be proven a superior addition to the frontline albumin-bound paclitaxel plus gemcitabine or not. I encourage patients, providers, to look at the nearest centers that is enrolling on the study and to refer patients for enrollment. I believe Every patient with metastatic cancer, including metastatic pancreas cancer, should have tissue acquisition for broad molecular profiling. We uncover things that we weren't expecting. Yeah, we know about BRCA and PARP and some of MSI and checkpoint inhibitors, but if you look at pancreas cancer across the board, it's as high as 25% of patients will have some sort of actionable mutation. Some are better than others, granted, but at least there's stuff there. And I think an incredible project that I'm very proud to, one of my colleagues is running across the country, is a pancreas cancer sort of know your tumor precision promise project, where if you've done molecular profiling, um, there are opportunities to have 
tailored therapies offered to you based on what the patient's gene expression was. So I think the world of precision medicine is just really beginning and we've got a few things that we've been able to pull off but where this study is going is taking this data, integrating it with the best knowledge that we have today, and turning that into a therapeutic recommendation for an individual patient, all what precision medicine is about, um, and giving that patient the best therapy that our brains can come up with today in the hopes that it improves outcomes. So it's really the way to go.